first one, 16, 17, and 32, um, or tooth numbers 1, 8, 2, 8, 3, 8, and 4, 8, depending on which system you're on for tooth numbering. Um, and we're going to get these teeth out today. Um, so, um, right now she's got some uh, Versed and some fentanyl on board, just kind of getting sleepy. Um, and uh, we'll get these teeth out. So stay tuned and we shall show you uh, one tooth at a time. So because we're using um, uh, Expril, the ultra long lasting local anesthetic, you take a look down here, we have um, four carpels of Marcane so that I can go ahead and administer this stuff, the Expril, um, immediately. If you give a different type of local anesthetic, you have to wait 20 minutes before you can administer the Expril. Um, and I want to give it right off the bat. So we're going to do that. Um, and we'll get her numb here just as soon as we get her completely asleep. Here. So I'm getting the upper teeth, or the top tooth on the left hand side, tooth number 16 numb first. And then I'm going to do the mandibular block on this side. This is called the long buckle nerve block, so the local anesthetic right there as well. And what I'll do is I'll come back over here, get a little numbing medicine here, as well as the mandibular block on this side. Same thing, aspirating, making sure we're not in blood vessels. Then we'll get the top numb, a little palatal injection right there. And then a little infiltration over here. And then we'll get the x -row. So, for the x -row, it's the same idea. So a little local anesthetic right in this area. Kind of right down in here too. And then back over here. for the top one as well and that's it for the expert so now all the local anesthetic is in for her so now what we need to do is start taking out some teeth so a little trick here I pull this bike block forward a little bit just so that I can get her lower jaw to swing off to the side gives me a little bit better access she's asking for a little more medicine so she gets a little bit more of this stuff if you take a look this is called I call this milk of amnesia a little bit of medicine there too all right, so these teeth are what we call impacted, so I need to make uh, an incision to get access here. So let's start with that. I got a thick blue Make the top incision and the lower incision at the same time. Stick that there. Then I move the gum tissue out of the way. It's called raising a full thickness flap so that we can see the surgical site down below where this wisdom tooth is and then we can also see up here so I gotta raise this tissue out of the way that's what this fancy little instrument does once I have this tissue out of the way I can start to see that too so, section right here that is the tooth right there so, now this fancy little instrument which might remind you of basic instinct and the ice pick, but it is not it's called a straight elevator elevate this thing, and then the tooth comes out to say hello. So check this out. This right here is called a follicle. That's um, extra soft tissue um, that's part of the development of the tooth. We just want to get that out as well, so that's got to go. I'll get a curette to make sure that there's no more in there. Got a bone file. Now I'm making sure things are smooth in there. And I always like to palpate it, make sure it's smooth that way too. Just a little bit of a rough edge in there. So I'm going to go ahead and just smooth that down just a little bit more. Justin likes to pull the gauze in front to make it just a little more challenging. Yeah, just to spice it up a bit. So I'll switch out the gauze because this one's getting saturated. So I'm going to switch that out. I'm going to put my bite block farther back in. And then, as you can tell, the gauze likes to kind of be a part of this with her tongue kicking it over. So this bad boy is called a leader tongue retractor, also known as a sweetheart. Justin used to think I was calling him sweetheart, but no, it was just the retractor. Sorry, Justin. <laughs> Can I have um, the drill next, please? Let's uncover this thing first of all. So, if this is going, you can see there's lots of irrigation. What we're doing, pour water, let's see this. Okay, you're right. You have to move your tip, Justin. Oh, okay, that's good. I don't want to cut the tip in half. Not <laughs> yet. The thing is yellow. Some more water. More irrigation. 
Okay, sweeten this. We need a little bit more water to keep things super cool. Nice drink there. Okay. So now we can get a feel for that tooth. It's sitting right there. I always like to correlate with the radiograph so I know where it is. And then we need to section this thing. So now what I'm doing, after I've made my buckle cross, is actually sectioning the tooth. So once I get my hands and drills out of the way, I will show you what we have. Okay. So you take a look. Here's the buckle cross. There's the two sections, so now I need a small straight elevator. So now that the um, tooth is cut, I'm going to actually stick my elevator in that groove and then break it and then take out the back part of the tooth. We'll need a larger typically to pick that up once we wiggle that out, which is right there. So I'll pick it up with the larger. And then, excuse me, Jack, I need to get the front part of the tooth out so I can get in here, start elevating. And lift that out of like this, and we want to grab onto that, get that out, and then we've got more of that follicular tissue, it's part of that sac that develops the tooth. So I'll get a curex, I want to make sure that I have all that soft tissue and everything cleaned out of there, including tooth, There's still a little bit of soft tissue follicle in there, so we're going to get the rongeur back here in a second to get that out. You can see that was kind of hiding in there. So grab onto that here. There it is. Look at that cute little fella right there. A little bit more right there. Okay, bone file. Now we gotta make sure things are smooth. And then we get a big rinse. Make sure that there's no debris, no pieces of tooth, pieces of bone, nothing underneath that flap. Or Jess is doing a great job of just making sure that things are clean and that water isn't going south down the oral pharynx, I have a throw pack in place that helps with that too. And then we'll put a stitch in there, so let's get a stitch. Okay, so with the suture, this is um, what we call 3-0 plain gut suture. Put this in. Can you hold that for me, Justin? Alright. How are you doing on the vitals front? So now what we're doing is switching things out, packing this side off, I'm going to go to the other side. She's starting to get a little light with her anesthesia, so I'm going to give her a little more medicine. This is just sterile saline, just to flush this in, so all my propofol is now in. And if you look at the tissue in here, you can tell that this is the area that's really been bothering her. If you look at that tissue, it's just kind of swollen, it looks beat up, it's inflamed basically, just because that thing's catching food. Um, and this is one of the main reasons why we get wisdom teeth out. If you take a look, food and debris gets underneath this little flap. And this is just the way she is right now because it, it's doing this actively and it's inflamed and it's sore. So what we're going to do is get this tooth out so you don't get this, um, in fact, there's a little bit of food and stuff that comes out. It's not her fault. It's impossible to keep that clean. So let's make our incision down here, first of all. This is called a buckle hockey stick incision. You can kind of see how it comes out towards the cheek right here. And then it comes around up to the uh, front part of the second molar, also known as the mesial part. And then I need to make an incision on the top as well. Periosteal. So we'll raise a flap on the top. There's that too. Super cute. This tooth right here. There we go. Now if you take a look at that too, I should be able to elevate that thing and not have to cut this side. So let's give it a wiggle. Yes. Look at that. This is just some love it when I do this. There we go. Right there. So it just popped on out. Kind of like it wanted to come out, which it did. So cure it. There we go. Cure it bump out. Take a bump out first. So again, I want to make sure things are smooth, even though we didn't remove any bone. I always like to let people know that because I had to cut the, the one side out versus the other, it is going to be a little bit more tender and sore. We have a curette, it's just hiding on us. Come here, Mr. Curette. 
Go ahead and suck her in there, yeah. So we'll cure that chin up. You can see here after we've got to breathe a lot better right there. Perfect. A little irrigation. Okay. Okay, and I'll put a stick in. We used to believe that suctioning it tight would decrease complications, infections, dry sockets, but we actually know now that it does not decrease the incidence of those things through research. And if you seal it off, you get a lot more swelling and pain afterwards. So we don't. We just put a stitch in to kind of tighten things up to reapproximate things, but it's not to, to do a what's called a hermetic seal where it's perfectly sealed. So we're going to cut that. Okay, now on the top, I need a small straight elevator. Remember, I've already raised my flap. Put a booger on there. Get that out of there. I don't want to gross Justin out so we're going to do this. So right there is the tube. So what I do is I get right in this little groove, kind of wiggle, and rotate, and then it comes out just like that. So there's the tube, grab onto it, set it over there. I'm going to make sure we have any soft tissue that's in that area out. You can see, there's that booger. Justin always tries to get me to throw these at the walls, but I think that's unprofessional, so I don't do that. Boom, clap. Okay, now let's palpate that, make sure it's smooth. Got all the paperwork done uh, for her. Uh, everything went very well, I think you could see. Uh, that is a fairly typical set of third molars and how we approach that. Um, the, you know, the key things I think are the buckle uh, hockey stick incision to avoid uh, nerve injury. Um, making sure that you have enough access to be able, actually able to see the teeth um, and to perform the procedure well, but not excessive. Um, you can tell, and, and if you want, go back and look at the radiograph, but the left side was more impacted and required sectioning of the tooth, where the right side um, did not. So she should do really well, particularly with that long-lasting local, uh, which will keep her numb uh, for about two to three days. And it's not the full, you know, I just went to the dentist feeling of numbness, it's just the localized area. The net effect is like a 70 to 75% reduction in the consumption of narcotics because they have that much less pain as well. So a uh, great answer uh, to keep her more comfortable but also uh, to address the opioid epidemic that's uh, kind of sweeping across America right now. So I hope you like that. Um, you know, leave a uh, thumbs up uh, down below, subscribe, and any comments and questions, we'd be happy to get those answered. See you next time. percent overall drop in opioid use and with the proper understanding and use of Expiral, you too can see the success that Expiral will bring to your clinic. Dr. McClelland, DDS, has been using it in his clinic for a few years now, and he's seen great success in his patients and their pain management every day. In this six-video series, you get a professional master class that will give you the jump start you need to include Expiral in your daily routine. It includes a bonus PDF with a patient information handout post-op medical instructions, and a quick look sheet for the materials and supplies for explaining Expiral. Go to teachable.com today and get educated on a non-opioid anesthetic that will help your patients have a better day.